Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the William Owen Putnam Mathematical Competition 1996 problem before. For any square matrix A with complex entries we define sine of a matrix, you are saying it right, sine of a matrix, we define it as the series as k goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of k, 2k plus 1 factorial, a raised to the power 2k plus 1. The question is, is it possible for sine of some square matrix, 2 by 2 matrix, be equal 1, 0, 1996, 1. Is it possible? Well, here are my hints for this problem. Notice first, we will use this powerful fact, uh, Jordan normal form, which says that any 2 by 2 matrix can be written as P, J, P to the power minus 1, where P is some invertible matrix, 2 by 2 matrix, and J is either a diagonal matrix with entries alpha, 0, 0, beta, or J has uh, alpha, alpha along the diagonal and 1 here. It's upper triangular matrix for some complex numbers alpha and beta. Notice that sine of alpha can be written as P sine of J inverse and also after changing uh, this uh, basis the determinant stays the same the trace stays the same recall also these two well-known expansions of cosine and sine cosine expands for any complex number alpha a series from k equals zero to infinity minus one to the power of k over 2k factorial alpha to the power 2k likewise sine can be found right here. And also, you can prove by induction very easily that if you take matrix alpha 0, 0, beta to the power of k, you get alpha to the power of k, 0, 0, beta to the power of k. And if you raise this matrix to the power of k, you get alpha to the power of k, k alpha to the power k minus 1, 0 alpha to the power of k. You should prove it easily by induction. Treat this, treat this as an easy exercise for you. So give this problem a try and I will see you in just a minute. All right, so we will start with this fact, which I have written right here. Any two by two matrix A can be written in this form. So now our problem separates into two sub problems for this matrix or for this matrix. So maybe let's consider them separately. Case number one when our matrix J is alpha, zero, zero, beta. All right. Now, what is sine of alpha? Sine of A. Sine of A can be written by definition. It says series from K equals zero to infinity, minus one to the power of K, two K plus one factorial, A to the power of two K plus one, And A can be written as P, J, P inverse, all to the power 2K plus 1. And now a nice thing happens. When you multiply a P, J, P inverse by itself, let's take a look. P, J, P inverse, for example, to the second power. Notice that these middle terms cancel and we are left with P, J squared, P inverse. If you multiply it once again, Again, the middle terms will cancel and you will be left with P, J cubed times P inverse and so on, which means that our series can be written in a simpler form. Namely, it's minus one to the power of K, 2K plus one factorial, P, only J is raised to the power 2K plus one, P inverse. And notice that we can, P is not dependent on K, So we get the following. All right. And what is this middle sum? It's a sine of j, of course. P sine of j, the inverse. 
All right. And you know what, this works for every any case, so maybe let's put case number one below this part of reasoning. And moreover, maybe maybe we'll also notice the following before we go. What is uh, the determinant? Well, notice that the determinant of A, the determinant of A is the determinant of P times the determinant of sine of J, times the determinant of p inverse. But the determinant of p times the determinant of p inverse is just one, so we are left with just determinant of j. Determinant of j. Or in our case, we actually want sine of a, so it can be also, because a and j are any matrices, determinant of sine of a, is the same as the determinant of sine of j. And what about the trace? What about the trace of a matrix? Well, notice that similar thing can be deduced. Trace of A is the same as trace of Pj, P inverse. Now, a nice property of trace is that uh, trace of uh, KL is the same of trace of LK. You can change the order of matrices. And in particular, it's the same as trace of P inverse PJ. But P inverse times P is the identity matrix, so it's the same as trace of J. Which of course means that trace of sine of A also equals trace of sine of J. Because A and J can be any matrix. All right, these two facts will be useful. So now, case number one, when j equals this matrix, then sine of L, sine of a is the same as p sine of j p inverse. And now let's expand once again the definition of sine of a matrix. Sine of a matrix is the sum of, as k goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of k, 2k plus 1 factorial, times j to the power 2k plus 1. But what is j to the power 2k plus 1? Well, you can prove it by induction, as I suggested. It can be written as that times p inverse which is p, and here we have sum as k goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of k, 2k plus 1 factorial, alpha to the power 2k plus 1, 0, 0, and likewise here is sum as k goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the power of k, 2k plus 1 factorial, beta to the power 2k plus 1 times p inverse. All right, but what is that? Well, this is just the normal Taylor series for ordinary sine function. So it's p sine of alpha sine of beta 0, 0. Perfect. Times p inverse, of course. Of course. And now let's suppose, suppose, suppose that sine of A actually equals 1, 1,996, 0, 1. Notice that this, this means that we have the following equality. P sine of alpha, 0, 0, sine of beta, P inverse equals 1, 1,896, 0, 1. And now I will compute the determinants and traces on both sides. Notice that the determinant of the left-hand left side by our observations is sine of alpha times sine of beta. And this should be equal to the determinant on the right-hand side, which is 1. Moreover, what about the trace? The trace on the left-hand side is sine of alpha plus sine of beta, and on the right-hand side 
it's one plus one two well is it possible well from the first equation from the second equation we can write that sine of beta equals two minus sine of alpha and our first equation becomes this which after some simplifications it's sine squared of alpha minus two sine of alpha plus one equals zero so it's sine of alpha minus one squared equals zero so sine of alpha and cosine of alpha must be both equal to one all right but now we have a problem because this means that p sine of alpha zero zero sine of beta p inverse notice that this matrix is what it's p the identity matrix p inverse which is the identity and of course the identity matrix is not equal to one zero one thousand nine hundred ninety six one of course it isn't so no solutions in this case So maybe let's consider case number two. Case number two, when j can be written as alpha zero one alpha for some complex number alpha. What then? Well, once again, sine of a equals p sine of j p inverse. But this time we have something slightly different. We have series from k going from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power of k over 2k plus 1 factorial. And now, once you raise this matrix to the power 2k plus 1, again, verified by induction, you get the following. K plus 1. Again, verify by induction. It is very easy. So, we get the following. P, and now we get, maybe let's write it below, because I need some space. So we get P times the following matrix. First entry is sum going from 0 to infinity. Minus 1 to the k power. 2k plus 1 factorial alpha to the power 2k plus 1 here we have 0 here we have minus 1 power of k 2k plus 1 factorial alpha 2k plus 1 and here and what here there is series from 0 to infinity minus 1 to the power of k and now let's take a look because here we have 2k plus 1 factorial and here we have 2k plus 1. So it can be simplified a bit. We get just 2k factorial after simplification. Alpha to the power 2k. Times, of course, p inverse. All right. So this is sine of alpha, 0, sine of alpha. And the last entry, it's cosine of alpha. Because of the Taylor series expansion. All right, and now let's again, let's compare that determinant. Maybe just look at the determinant. The determinant of this matrix is sine squared of alpha, and the determinant, maybe, you know what, let's write, maybe let's be explicit. So let's suppose that P sine of alpha zero cosine of alpha sine of alpha P inverse equals 101,1996. Let's compute determinants. The determinant of the left hand side is sine squared alpha. The determinant on the right hand side is 1. Which means after adding cosine squared of alpha, cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 plus cosine squared. But cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So we get 0 equals cosine squared of alpha, which of course means that cosine of alpha is 0. 
cosine of alpha is 0. And now we have a problem. Once again, once again we have a problem because this means that we have p sine of alpha 0, 0, sine of alpha. And sine of alpha, by the way, it's plus or minus, um, oh, let's leave it at that. It's plus or minus 1, but doesn't really matter. Or maybe it's right. Plus or minus 1. Either two pluses or two minuses. All right. But now this means that on the left-hand side we have either plus or minus identity, plus or minus 1, 0, 0, 1, and on the left-hand side we have 1, 0, 1,996, 1. Of course, this is impossible. Impossible, once again. which concludes our reasoning, which means our conclusion conclusion well, sine of A is never equal 1, 0, 1, 1,996 for any 2x2 matrix A. And this closes our problem. Very nice problem. So, yes, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you've learned something new this time. Hope that you, will, that you have been entertained, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.